Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel! This is Mom Saibel Explains. This video is all about greatest common factor. Example, Michael baked 18 banana cupcakes and 20 chocolate cupcakes. He wants to divide the cupcakes into identical containers so that each container has the same number of each kind of cupcake. If he wants each container to have the greatest number of cupcakes possible, how many plastic containers does he need? Our given are 18 banana cupcakes and 20 chocolate cupcakes. We can solve this problem by getting the greatest common factor. What is greatest common factor? It is simply the largest of the common factors of the two or more numbers. For this problem, we have to get the common factors of 18 and 20 so that we can identify the greatest common factor. So it's better if we're going to write 18 here and then 20 here. So what are the factors of 18? 1. What else? 2. Next, 3. Next is 6. Next is 9. And last one is 18. Why we cannot write there 4? 18 divided by 4 will not give you a whole number. So that's why 4 is not a factor of 18. And 1 is a factor because 1 times 18 is 18. Or 18 divided by 1 is 18. So you can, it can give you a whole number when you divide it. And for 20, what are the factors of 20? We have 1. 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Why 3 is not a factor of 20? Because when you divide 20 by 3, it will not give you a whole number. So that's why 3, 6, 7 is not a factor of 20. Since we have now the common factors of 18 and 20 will just identify which of these factors is the greatest so in here we have 1 and 1 and then 2 and 2 and no more so which of these two 1 and 2 is the greatest or the greater number because that will be our greatest common factor of course the answer is 2 so the greatest common factor of 18 and 20 is 2. We call this method as listing method. And it is quite consuming a lot of time. But I'll teach you the easiest way to find or in finding the greatest common factor. The method that I am talking about is the continuous division. How do we do continuous division? Um, to find the GCF or the greatest common factor of a set of numbers, the first thing that we should do is to write the numbers horizontally and find a prime number that will divide all the numbers if possible. So we'll write it horizontally, 18 and 20. Then we will divide these two numbers by a prime number. Okay, let's find what prime number can we divide 18 and 20. So let's have 2. 2 is a prime number. Actually, 2 is the smallest even prime number. So let's write 2. 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9. So we'll write 9 in the bottom here. Next, 20 divided by 2 is equal to 10. Do we still have a prime number that can divide 9 and 10? I think we don't have any more so if ever there is no prime number that can divide the remaining dividends then we consider this as our GCF already but if ever there's still number that can divide 9 and 10 then we have to continue the process until none of the numbers have a common prime divisor so the gcf is the product of all the prime divisors so we only have one which is two so it means our 
GCF for 18 and 20 is 2. We have another example. Sheila's mom gave her 30 pencils while Hope's mom gave her 36 pencils. They want to donate the same number of pencils to their less fortunate batchmates. What is the greatest number of pencils they can donate? Our given for this problem are the following 30 pencils and 36 pencils. We can solve this problem by getting the GCF greatest common factor. So we will use the continuous division method for this problem. We will start by writing the given numbers in a horizontal line 30 and then 36 then we will think of a prime number that can divide both 30 and 36 so we'll start i think with 3 we'll divide it by 3 30 divided by 3 is 10 36 divided by 3 is 12. what number can we divide 10 and 12 we can divide it with 2 because 2 is also a prime number. 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. Do we still have a number or prime number that we can divide both 5 and 6? If there's no number that can divide 5 and 6 anymore, then our answer will be this one. We will just multiply 3 times 2 is equal to 6. It means our GCF for this problem is 6. 6 is the greatest number of pencils Sheila and Hope can donate. Another example, Jed has 36 bananas, 24 avocados, and 18 apples. He wants to put all the fruit into baskets with each basket having the same number of pieces of fruit in it. Without mixing the fruit, what is the greatest number of pieces of fruit Jed can put in each basket? The given in our problem are the following 36 bananas, 24 avocados, and 18 apples. We can solve this problem by getting the GCF or the greatest common factor. We will use the continuous division in answering this problem. We will solve now 36, 24, and 18. What prime number can we divide all three numbers? Okay, we can start with, I think, 2. 36 divided by 2 is equal to 18. 24 divided by 2 is equal to 12 and 18 divided by 2 is 9. Do we still have a number that can divide the three numbers 18, 12, and 9? Yes, we have 3. 18 divided by 3 is 6. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. Do we still have a prime number that can divide 6, 4, and 3? Mm -hmm. If there's none, it means 2 times 3 is equal to 6, and 6 is our answer. It means this is the greatest number of pieces of fruit Jed can put in each basket. Now let's have some exercises. Let's get the GCF of the following numbers. The first one is we'll have 22 and 44. What number can we divide 22 and 44? Let's have 2. 22 divided by 2 is equal to 11. 44 divided by 2 is equal to 22. Do we still have a number, a prime number, that we can divide both 11 and 22? Yes, that's 11. 11 divided by 11, that's 1. 22 divided by 11, that's 2. Do we still have a number that can divide both 1 and 2? I think there's no more. So, so it means our answer is this. 2 times 11 is equal to 22. That is our final answer. The GCF of 22 and 44 is 22. Another one. 24, 42, and 48. 
using the continuous division method, what number can we divide 24, 42, and 48? We'll start to off with 2. 24 divided by 2 is equal to 12. 42 divided by 2 is equal to 21. 48 divided by 2 is equal to 24. Next, what number can we divide? 12, 21, and 24. Do we still have one number? Yes, we have. That's 3. 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. 21 divided by 3 is equal to 7. 24 divided by 3 is equal to 8. Do we still have a number that can divide 4, 7, and 8? With the 3 of them? I don't think so. So it means this is our answer. That is 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So the GCF of 24, 42, and 48 is 6. What if the given numbers are 16 and 17? We will get the GCF of 16 and 17 using continuous division. What number can we divide both 16 and 17? Is there a prime number that we can divide? Can we divide 2? No. 3? No. Do we have a number that can divide 16 and 17? No. So it means we only have 1. So 16 divided by 1 is 16. 17 divided by 1 is 17. So our GCF is equal to 1. We can call 16 and 17 as relatively prime numbers. Why? Because there is no number greater than 1 that divides these two numbers. We can also say 18 and 19 are relatively prime numbers. What else? 5 and 6 are also relatively prime numbers because if you're going to solve their GCF, you'll get 1. So they're called relatively prime numbers. Don't forget to hit the like button if you think this is helpful. Till next time!